Welcome and thanks for tuning in to Sunday Evening Sermon. For the next few minutes, we hope to inspire you to live your best life, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and financially, through this message. It is open to all, regardless of faith. Let's watch and listen. the chairperson of the Daughters of Sheba Foundation. Thank you for joining us again for another Sunday. Come back to the vibes that comes alive. That is a familiar tagline adv advertising Jamaica to the world. Advertising material depict a beautiful blue ocean and white sandy beaches with a gorgeous couple lying on a hammock in the shade of palm tree fronds. The idea conveyed are that there are no problems, man, in Jamaica, that life is sweet and dandy, and that Jamaica is the closest thing to paradise on this side of heaven. Tourists come and they just wish they could spend the rest of their lives there. Everyone in Jamaica must be happy, right? However, for many persons living on the beautiful island of Jamaica, including many of you watching this further from the truth, the fact is that for many persons, there are more problems than we know what to do with. Life is hard and wearisome every single day. It is only through the mercies of God that you have made it this far. I know also for a fact that these experiences do not only belong to persons living in Jamaica. They don't only belong to people who are not believers of any kind of God. Depression, anxiety, stress, grief, insecurity, regret are all emotions experienced by over 250 million people worldwide. What's intriguing is the stress is often concealed, especially by women and not to mention women in churches. They look happy. They're wearing clothes bought on a recent shopping trip to Miami, Toronto, Dubai, but under the facade, they're hurting and feel like there is no one to help and no way out of their situation. It also doesn't matter whether the person is a man or a woman. Men would like to portray that tough, macho exterior in order to suggest that nothing bothers them, nothing hurts their feelings, they don't cry, and what's more, they don't even care, but nothing could be further from the truth. Whether we are male or female, we experience threats to our emotional and mental health. Sometimes these threats can be so great that they prevent us from being able to function. The depressed or worried person can be so crippled by his or her condition that he or she remains home or if at work is unable to free the mind for even long enough to be able to accomplish, accomplish anything on the job. When you combine mothering and the mental health awareness, it is not difficult to see what a challenge women, mother, can have. Life is hard and many living in paradises around the world know it. They are imagining themselves currently being anywhere else but where, where they are. <laughs> they are longing for a moment when grief, failure, hopelessness, depression, anxiety, self-hatred, vulnerability would be dulled and they would be set free from their stresses. What is emotional or mental health anyway? Is it just a figment of one's imagination? A theory purported by weak-minded people who are negative in their outlook and don't have enough faith in God to bounce back from their trials? Is it actually true that real Christians, for example, don't get depressed or anxious or stressed out, and if they do, it's because they don't have a real relationship with God? One definition reads like this. Emotional health can best be described as a state where you're in control of your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. You feel good about yourself and your relationships and can keep problems in perspective. Emotionally healthy people can still have emotional problems and mental illness, but they have learned ways to cope with stress and problems and know when to seek help from their doctor or counselor." End quote. The issue is, therefore, not that we 
don't experience problems and challenges, but more of how we are able to deal with them. It, is all, it also acknowledges that in the same way we know that we should seek a doctor when we're physically sick because we don't know how to make ourselves better, when we are mentally and emotionally unwell, we should be responsible and intelligent enough to seek a psychologist or counselor to help us. The maxim, a healthy mind in a healthy body, is not therefore something often repeated meaninglessly. The thoughts of a person's heart have a fundamental effect on his or her health. These thoughts, when negative, can at times be powerful enough to make one physically sick. The Bible does corroborate this when it says in Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Joyce Meyer, in her book, The Battlefield of the Mind, makes an emphatic statement very early, which we should all bear in mind. You cannot have a positive life and a negative mind. An article in the magazine Network, produced by the Canadian Mental Health Association many, many years ago, entitled Getting a Physical for a Mental Health by one Michelle Gold, states clearly, quote, Individuals with emotional distress or poor mental illness report poorer physical health and have greater rates of chronic conditions such as arthritis, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke than the general population. This is why it is said there can be no health without mental health, end quote. Have you ever heard this phrase? A contented mind, a cheerful spirit is healthy to the body and strength to the soul. The author, a sister white, goes on to say, nothing is so fruitful a cause of disease as depression, gloominess, and sadness. Many of the diseases from which men suffer are the result of mental depression. She also wrote that the brain nerves which communicate to the entire system are the only medium through which heaven can communicate to humans and affect our innermost life. The fact is that the fact is that life happens. From the first human beings on earth, we have been subjected to disappointments, tragedies, setbacks, hurts, and failures. Good emotional and mental health does not negate the fact that we're going to have challenges in this life. Rather, it just tells us that in spite of the inevitable challenges, we are able to conquer them. However, the choice to experience good mental health is ours. Let me repeat that. The choice to experience good mental health is yours. The injunction in Romans 12, 1 says this, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. As I watch my own life progress and that of women in my personal space, as well as the women I see on social media, it is clear what happens to us when we allow external factors, influences, some might say the devil, to take control of our minds. Each and every one of us have to be, has to be disciplined, level up, and correct the old habits of thinking. It is hard work, just like physical exercise is hard work, but it must be done if we are to experience life to the full as intended. As I close today, let me offer some principles we, mothers, women in general, can employ to keep our heads on as we go forward into this week. One, realize who your true adversary is. The source of our problems is not the situation of situations of our lives, our boss, our children, or our spouses, or someone on social media. The attacks at our mental and emotional health comes directly from within. Psalms 143.3 says, My spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart is appalled within me. Two, have a positive outlook. It's not Pollyanna. God is positive, And if your thoughts are to match up with God's ideal for you, they must be positive as well. Faith, 
truth, patience, joy, peace, gratefulness, among all other positive emotions are the most important. If you're having negative viewpoints, attitudes, and conversations, and you're surrounded by negative people, get them out of your life starting today. Thirdly, depend on source for your help. Source has given us the weapons we need to survive in this battle for our mental and emotional health. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven and cringing and fawn in fear, but he gave us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. 2 Timothy 1, 7. So here are two weapons we have at our disposal this week. Gratitude or thankfulness. Psalm 104 says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth for all generations. Second weapon is prayer. Remember the exhortation from Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5.16 and it is, to pray without ceasing. Maintain your communication with the only one who can heal our minds, the one whose mindset we're actually to adopt is through prayer. Today, the concept is simple. There is a thief, a distraction that is causing us to steal, kill, and destroy our own joy, love, and peace, and fill ourselves instead with worry, depression, envy, discouragement, and despair. But all does not have to be lost. We were not placed here to be controlled and distracted by the minority, especially on social media, but to be as the creator intended, to have life here on earth to the full. Mothers, friends, women, the choice is yours. What is it that you want? Do you want to enjoy the blessings of mental health and emotional health? Pray then and be grateful with me today, remembering these words. Beloved, I pray that in all respects, you may be prospered and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. Thank you for watching and have a blessed rest of your Don't soul. forget to subscribe for more content like this. Until next time, remember, you're stronger than you think. Thanks again for watching. Join the Daughters of Sheba Foundation each Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Sunday Evening Sermon and be inspired for the week ahead.